Hi, this is Loreen, and I'm doing another video. If you'll give me a second to clear center and balance my energy, we'll get started. So, um, uh, I talked about my dad's cookie recipe and I didn't post a picture, which one of my favorite pictures of my dad was sent to me by the memory care facility. And I'm, I'm going to put that picture in picture of him eating my cookies. I think this picture was when he was 93 it was right before covid so it would have been 2019 i think it was father's day 2019 and i believe he would have been um 93 because he passed away in nine uh january 4th 2000 last year 2022 which was uh, right before his 96th birthday so he was 95 he would have been 96 january 24th so Anyway, um, I didn't post a picture of that. So, this week, starting Monday, um, there were so many, excuse me, there were so many um, messages, and it was just, constant barrage of messages there's so many pages in here I was like oh my god if this continues all week like this I'm gonna have three videos on Saturday or Sunday and uh, it slowed down um, I think it was Wednesday and I was very grateful because it was exhausting um, and it was just exhausting because I'm working, I'm writing, and it's all day long. And, um, and the information comes in, and I'm splitting my, my attention, my consciousness in so many different directions, trying to do so many different things. It's um, just a lot of work. Let's just put it that way. It's just a lot of work. And um, so anyway, I'm going to get started. Um, one eight, January 8th. How do we protect ourselves from what resides within? So last week I talked about how we manifest the darkness in our life, the negativity in our life with negative thoughts because it's our negative thoughts that attract negativity into our lives and negative experiences. I also said that I felt like humanity was directed in um, very consciously uh, from this negativity, this cabal energy, directed um, in a way to feel fear, insecurity, um, anger, aggression, um, all these negative emotions. I think it's kind of, we've been slowly geared to, to this consciousness, this way of thinking, and it's become normal, our homeostatic state, right? So with these negative thoughts and these fears and these insecurities, we create and draw those fears and insecurities into our lives. Okay, and so when I ask this question, how do we protect ourselves from what resides within? How do we protect ourselves from these thoughts that are attracting this negativity? Maintain clear, centered, balanced energy and set up protective fields. It is the darkness within that draws in the darkness from without, whether that darkness be fear, anger, resentment, shame, etc., or any memories that perpetuate or call into your mind 
those emotions, those negative emotions, those low vibratory emotions. Once you've mastered balancing your emotions and thoughts, drawing in energy and setting up protective fields is unnecessary. You call the energy from within and project it out. You will not carry anything from within that will draw in the darkness, negativity, or unbalanced energy. There will be nothing you will need to protect yourself from. And that's very interesting that this video starts with that because as I was clearing my energy, one of my affirmations came into my mind because I always set up these, bring in the light and I'm setting up these protective fields around me all the time, including right before starting my videos. And as I was doing that today, um, this energy, this light energy comes in, this divine source energy comes in and, and I have, as I'm clearing my energy, I hear, um, uh, Give me a second. You are the light from which all things come. No darkness resides here. No darkness can reside here. And, um, and as I was going through that process, that's actually one of my affirmations that I am the light from which all things come and that no darkness resides in this space. Um, and as I'm saying that I, communicate with the source energy and I'm like I'm still I still what about all this darkness these psychic attacks these energy energetic attacks and the and I'm just stopped in the middle of that no that is not where you are anymore here in this place where you are now you are the light which um from which all things come you draw the light to you you solely draw light balance energy to you okay so it's interesting that this this video starts with this um message in my journal because although i do throughout the week i was recalling a lot of the stuff as i sit here to start the video i'm like blank again i'm not sure what's in my journal so let me start let me read that last part again you will not carry anything from within that will draw the darkness, negativity, or unbalanced energy. There will be nothing you will need to protect yourself from. So once you balance mastering your emotions, your thoughts, um, drawing in energy and setting protective fields is unnecessary. Okay? You can, because when you have balanced thoughts, balanced energy, you don't, you're not drawing any negativity to you, okay? Your aura is your protective field. A clear, balanced aura is your greatest protection. A clear, balanced, centered energy field draws you back to the divine. It draws you back to unity. This is all of our paths and purpose each journey is different and so also I'll add that there are these two um, tarot readers I watch very very strong in their center very much projecting from the heart from balance from a very balanced place and I see when I'm watching the videos and um, I can feel and see that they're having a lot of energetic attacks um, and they're having, and it's, it's a struggle when you, when you have this barrage of energetic attacks. But what that tells me, what this message tells me is that we are now at that divergence, that place where, um, we are living from light and balanced energy and all the negativity is falling away. So it is disempowered. It is disempowering itself. Um, the force that it was attempting to exact on, pe on paladins of love and light, of people living from balance, of individuals uh, moving towards unification, that those attacks, 
um, they're weakening. And what's happening is the strong, very strong feeling is it's going to start weakening exponentially. Like an earthquake builds exponentially. Um, being from California, I've dealt with a lot of earthquakes. Um, this, it's the opposite now with this negative energy. It's going to be decreasing exponentially. And so now I have epiphany on a message from my last video. So the last video, Pablo Picasso uh, coming to mind while using the painting metaphor. So while in the last video I used a metaphor about humanity or, or the universe and each uh, consciousness in the universe, um, each fractal, each piece of the divine uh, representing an aspect of a painting a perspective from a painting, um, a dimension of a painting, um, but the painting as a whole represents that uni that unification conscious unification consciousness, that unified consciousness of the source, one consciousness. Okay. And so I was using the Pablo pa Pablo Picasso kept popping into mind and while I was talking about that and I really didn't have time to think about what the connections were and I, I didn't take the time to think about the connection or what that could have implied but Pablo Picasso was the father of cubism and it was an, it's an artistic form art and it is a metaphor for fractals so if you look at um, Pablo Picasso's cubi, cubism phase which he is the father of um, it's each painting has uh, cubes um, and they seem separate but actually in totality it is one image created from this artistic uh, form that he created so I just thought it was important to mention that um, and it's about the discussion as that we are facets of the divine wholly created by one so just like each cube is a facet of this artistic uh, style it was wholly created by one mind Pablo Picasso and we are all facets of this universe wholly created by one mind the divine source the creator of all things so 1-9 January 9th woke up with information running through my head about creation about love intimacy passion and emotion the act of intercourse and the resulting conception is the ultimate act of creation utilizing intimacy love passion emotion but it is not the only form of creation the more love, passion, and emotion we feel towards anything, the more intimately connected we are to that thing, the closer that creation comes to omnipotent, all-powerful, and pervasiveness. Those who transcend on Mother Earth are working towards a level of creation equal to that of the divine from the material plane. It is the birthright of those transcending from Mother Earth, those who have mastered this emotional body that carries the depth and breadth of emotion to eventually be empowered with the depth and breadth of creation from the material plane. We will embody the omniscious all-knowing, omnipotent, 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 all-powerful qualities of the divine from the physical form, as well as the ability to create. And this is physical creation through birth, through intercourse, through love, and creating life, as well as creating this world. Um, all parts of it, the vegetation, the life, um, the soil. The vetting process we are going through is rigorous, unforgiving, and definitive. Not all will transcend. The mastery of the emotional body is required. One cannot 
lie, one cannot lie to, manipulate, circumvent the vetting process put in place or the divine. This truth leads um, the cabal energies, primary and secondary, along with the Zeta Reticuli, Alpha Draco, living from separation, and many other energies to continue to attempt to traumatize humanity. It is why our children are being objectified as toddlers, preschoolers, and elementary level schoolers. It is the reason for the gender movement of present day. Any confusion or bastardization of any and all types of relationships, the further they feel they pull us from transcendence. Um, so the fact that those transcending will have these gifts, will have earned these gifts from the divine, moves this negative energy, these negative energies, including the cabal, the primary and neg uh, secondary, the Zeta Reticuli, the Alpha Dra Draco living from separation, and many other energies across the universe who fear this gift and this. Um, I guess, power that we're being given. Um, they fear it so much, they will continue to objectify our children, um, diminish our children. Um, they will continue to try to bastardize our, our divine masculine and divine feminine with these gender movements. Um, and... Uh, And any, anything they feel that they are doing as far as um, creating confusion or the bastardization of relationships, divine masculine or divine feminine, um, they feel pulls us away from transcendence, transcendence, removes us from this path and purpose. This is about maintaining control. This, to this end, they are trying to maintain control, okay? We are powerful creators, manifestors from this place filled with trauma, okay? And I'll just add it. I don't know if I wrote this further on, but because we have overcome, for those of us who have overcome our traumas, who have been able to empower ourselves through and beyond our trauma, that is what makes us powerful creators because if we can survive that and learn compassion through those traumas we are powerful beyond words we are gifted beyond words because unless you know these experiences unless you know this trauma how can you have compassion for someone going through it right you and i think i'll use the my, I have two brothers that are drug addicts and one's been through rehab three times now and um, I find that him and other people he's gone through rehab with who I've known um, you I can't as someone who's never been an addict go into that environment and relate to what these people are experiencing. They really need someone who's been through it and has succeeded to live by example and show them that it can be done. That to show them that they can live a life of sobriety and have joy, love, and happiness in my life, be successful, be fulfilled, and, and be able to live through and release the traumas that drew them to addiction, right? that drew them to a place where they felt like they needed to numb themselves from whatever it was they were numbing themselves from because a lot of times they don't even have a recollection of the pain and the trauma that they've experienced that is causing them to want to numb themselves, right? So because we have been through so much, that is how we become powerful manifestors and creators, okay? Um, 
If we live from clear-centered, balanced places, if we maintain healthy relationships, if we live from the heart center, unconditional love, our gifts empower us in ways that is unparalleled. It is meant to be unparalleled, and many worlds do not want that or fear it. Worlds that you might feel aligned with. And so I say that because there are so many people who are like, I was a Pleiadian, I was an Arcturan, I was a whatever. There are so many different Lyrians, um, Lemurians, um, I was, my people are from Atlantis. There are so many people who relate to these, who they consider to be higher level consciousnesses, uh, higher people, energies living from greater awareness. And they are so aligned with that, that they feel like they shouldn't even be here. Like they want to escape this world and go to that place, right? And be part, go back to where they were from. Um, so these worlds that you feel that you're aligned with, many of them, most of them, um, fear you now fear us here on this world who are successfully transcending or have successfully transcended, okay? So whatever loyalty you feel or whatever alignment you feel, you have to really connect to your heart and through your heart to the divine and the higher self and to the divine and ask and requ request divine guidance what are you connecting to and is that healthy is that part of your path and purpose is that meant to be or are you being used as a tool of manipulation now that is what you have to ask yourself and that is what you must re discern that's what all of us have to discern our obligation is to this world to each other the raptors and gladiolas no one else we are meant to live by example from a place of love and light we are not meant to be led we are meant to lead by example from unconditional love compassion forgiveness we save ourselves we unify we transcend that is our past path and purpose and so i added gladiolas and the raptors those communities uh, within that because they are connected to Mother Earth just as we are and this is their world as much it is our, as it is our world and we are on a path of unification with them as our allies to help and heal uh, and transcend Mother Earth. We all work as a unifying force creating a unifying field in this endeavor. Last night and when I woke up this morning, I saw a grid above me. So this is still the eighth. I was thinking to myself, people want me to stop, shut up. They know that my words manifest. They want me to stop. I thought, I'm sure people want me dead. Then I thought that maybe that may be true, but I know I am heavily fortified and protected. I will not stop. When I die, I know it is because it is meant to be. As I had that thought, a large grid with spheres revealed itself above me. I thought to myself, I knew something was there even though I had never seen it prior to that moment. So as I'm going through this, I mean, I know, I've known this for years. I've had many energetic attacks. Um, that are meant to instill fear in me. I've woken up many times with no air. And I had a friend that actually said, maybe you need a CPAP machine. No, that wasn't it. Because as soon as I woke up, my airway started opening and I was okay. And it's not something that happens every night or even every other night. It was just this one night I was having this issue. Um, and actually one other night I had it happen one time, but this, other night it happened three times um, um, 
but I don't fear death anyway. So anyway, I every time I look up now, and I've never seen it before, but I have uh, I felt it, but there are these spheres um, that are above me in a grid. Um, and let's see, where did I, I drew it. I didn't do a very good drawing, I just did it really quick. I'll do a picture in picture, but they're just like this, just in a grid, and they're literally round spheres. And, um, and they are in a grid pattern, and they are above me. And um, they're not small, they're huge. They are, I couldn't even begin, let's see. Um, when I look up and I see them, they are, I would say they're about 25 feet above my head and I'm somewhere around there, 20, 15 to 25 feet above my head. And they are maybe the size of, um, I would say three or four feet in diameter. Oh, oh God, maybe they're bigger than that because they're so high up. It's hard to tell, maybe six feet in diameter. And um, that's generally speaking because perspective is unique and it's individual. Um, so I would say that's about, and it's, I only have, let's see, 16 here, but actually they're just, there's a, there's as many as is needed to be above my head and then out in all directions from there. So I couldn't even begin to estimate the number. Um, I could see on the other side of the, of the wall of spheres, many other beings trying to figure out a way to gain access to me. That is an exercise in futility. Nothing can usurp the divine. So that's a feeling that came through. Like I saw faces almost like in Superman, um, the original Superman uh, with Christopher Reeves, when they put the, the evil, the dark beings, um, Zod and his cohort um, in the, in that dimension, that alternate dimension, and it looks like a mirror and they're all behind it and they're like, making faces, I, maybe I can find an image, I'll do a picture in picture, but that's what it's like. I can see all these beings on the other side of the spheres trying to like look and figure out a way to get through or get past the spheres. Um, this is an exercise in futility. Nothing can usurp the divine. This is the message being echoed throughout the universe right now. I kept that nothing can usurp the divine. I kept on seeing Enoch. So I watched a video on the book of Enoch. And so I kept on seeing stuff on, you know, social media. And then like we had a student that came in whose name was Enoch. And I was like, this is just way too many synchronicities for me to pass up. So I watched a video on Enoch and I'll put it in um, the description. It talked about the watchers and drew parallels to the Anunnaki. I was pull, the pull was strong and therefore, and there were a lot of messages, but the strongest was that the Anunnaki, the watchers are aligned with the energy of the Alpha Draco living from separation, Zeta Reticuli and Cabal energies, primary and secondary. As we end a cycle, so do they. And so in this video, they, drew parallels between the Watchers and the Anunnaki, implying that they were actually the same people, okay? Also, the word convergence keeps coming to mind. In talking about various timelines, they are trying to manifest those timelines. In other words, within the dogma of the esoteric and scientific communities, they presented the idea, the possibility of timelines in order to create such a phenomenon. That's how, power, that's how powerful humanity's ability to create is, even from this place of brokenness. So, um, okay, I'm just going to keep on. Um, so we are, even from this place of, we're broken and bloodied. There's no other way to put it. We, humanity is broken and bloody. We have been through so much. And even from this place of brokenness, we are incredibly powerful 
manifestors. There is um, a convergence happening driven by divine source energy with a clear message. You cannot usurp the divine. The universe is shifting its... Uh, The universe is shifting its parts. From this place of transcendence, divinity will reconcile itself. The feeling, the feeling is the divine has been working through many possibilities, many iterations of itself. Something like our, uh, our decision-making process. When we have multiple options before us, we look at each option and consider, envision the possible outcomes. Like investments, that's, that's, a, good, um, that's a good example, like people, money is so important to people. So they look at all the investments, all the possibilities, and they consider, okay, what's going to make me the most money? What's the highest risk? So yes, I can do this. It's a high risk, but it'll be a high reward. Or I could do this. It's not such a high risk, but I will slowly make money. What am I trying to achieve? What am I willing to risk? What might the outcome be, right? So we're all trying, we're all looking at different possibilities, different possible outcomes, and then we make a decision based on what risk we're willing to take, right? Or lack thereof. Uh, when we have multiple options before us, we look at each option and consider, envision the possible outcomes. At this place, the divine has chosen this incarnation of Mother Earth as the pivotal point, the fulcrum of this iteration of the source of all creation. Um, and so it is this iteration, it is this reality that the divine has decided that this is the fulcrum. This is the middle point. This is the point of the midpoint of transcendence for the divine. This is convergence, okay? There are no other timelines, but you can look at it as that. All the timelines are converging because it's this moment that creates the future for this universe. No other timelines are considered. No other realities, no other possibilities, however you want to look at it. This is it right here. This is zero point, okay? The thought that comes to mind the hammer is coming down. The hammer is coming down hard. And that's a quotation mark. So that is, I have those in quotation marks. So that information came in intuitively. Uh, those were the words that came into my mind. Note, the dogma of religion teaches there is a uniform path to heaven. That is a lie. Um, and so that is the end of that day. But there is no uniform path to heaven. There is no uniform path to transcendence. Transcendence. Each person has a path and purpose. And that path and purpose determines your, uh, is your blueprint, your plan for your uh, journey in this universe and how you transcend in each place not religion not the rules and the dogma of religion that is not a determining factor religion was presented as a foundation to open us up to spirituality to our connection to the divine from this 3d place but it is our obligation to find that individual connection to the divine seek and find our path and purpose and walk that path okay that's where we're at right now and so for anybody who says you have to, any organization that says you have to do it this way in order to make it to heaven, heaven, and let's equate heaven with transcendence, right? That would be incorrect. Someone's saying you have to do it this way to get to heaven. That's a lie. That's a manipulation. Your connection to the divine dictates your path to heaven, dictates your path to transcendence, dictates your path to your purpose, which is your journey through this existence. 110, January 10th. After writing the information that came in last night, I saw a, a whip cracking. There was a def 
definite need to address or include the Anunnaki and or watchers in the grouping with the Zeta Reticuli, Alpha Draco living from separation, primary and secondary cabal energies, their vibrations are aligned. And so up to this point, I really haven't talked about the Anunnaki. Um, and, and so that pull to watch that video on Enoch was like the divine saying, you need to include these this energy, these energies with these other energies that you talk about all the time. You never talk about the Anunnaki, you have to bring them in. Um, I see, so now I'm bringing them in. I see the whip cracking, the hand holding the handle is represented by Mother Earth. The movement, intensity, vibration emanating from the metaphoric uh, wrist snapping moves down the whip and increases with intensity and force until that intensity and force reaches the end of the whip and the cracking sound is heard. So that whoosh, <laughs> that um, initial force to create the initial snap of the wrist that creates the force down the whip that initial, uh, ends with that cracking sound is that building of force and intensity, right? That's the metaphor that's being shared in this, uh, that's the message being shared in this metaphor. That's what's trying to be conveyed. The transition of Mother Earth is represented by the handle of the whip. The snapping of the wrist and cracking of the whip represents the karmic backlash that will be occurring across the universe as a result of the manipulation, abuse, and marginalization of all beings, all energies, const uh, constituting Mother Earth. That means all humans, all animals, the soil, the plants, insects, every part of the earth, the soil, the air, every part of Mother Earth, the clouds, the water, the atmosphere, every part of Mother Earth. The end of the whip carries the most intensity and force. The intensity and force of this karmic backlash will reach the edges of the universe. Not one particle of energy will escape this karmic justice. And every time I tried to write the word edges, I kept writing the word end. So like four times, literally, I kept on writing ED, I was trying to write E-D-G, and every single time I did that, it went E-N, E-N. And I had to keep erasing it four times. And then I just wrote, uh, and then I wrote end. And the fifth time when I was trying to write the word edges, once again, I wrote end again. So I was like, okay, edges and end. There's definitely something that needs to be said. So there is an interplay between edges and ending, which is a clear message for me. Before I started writing this segment, I was shown my photograph metaphor uh, representing time. It makes sense that it should be brought up now as opposed to the beginning of this segment. And so I have this photo represent representation of time. And so I'll just read it. So if you place a photograph of every moment in time across a table, that table, that plane, would represent the universe. So you have a photograph for each moment in time uh, placed on one table and spread out across that table, okay? The further across the table the photograph, the further um, across time and space. But truly, all time, all experiences exist, exist simultaneously. There is no time. It is merely a construct. The, so I always use this, I always feel this position when I talk about all time is now. And so that's the rhombus, okay? The rhombus shape is right here, it represents this moment in time existing eternally across space, right? So each moment is occurring right now and each photograph is each moment in time across space occurring right now, 
okay? Um, and so truly there is no time, but because from we where we are at this 3D place, for, for us to go from this moment to that moment, we cross space. And in crossing space, we're actually crossing time to get from this moment to that moment. But even from the, the perspective of the divine or from a higher perspective, all time is happening in this moment, okay, right now. Um, the cracking of the whip, the karmic backlash will be felt to the edges of the table and will represent the end of this iteration of divinity. Unity will be known. And so, and I say this later in um, this my journal, but when I had that epiphany come in, I felt the end of the universe. I felt everything come to an end. I felt myself... quiet and I felt the stillness and I sat and I was at, actually at work when I was writing this and I'm sure I wrote this in my journal but I kind of opened my eye and I kind of half expected for the universe to kind of start folding in on itself like um, if you've seen uh, Interstellar uh, they say that there's a line that says the Tesseract is closing this concept this idea of time starts to collapse on itself like time in, in, in a has been created in a physical is physically manifested in this tesseract and it starts to close on itself and so I almost expected like to see something like that happen but it didn't it was also extremely emotional and powerful because I knew in that moment that I've already completed all incarnations of my existence and unified with the divine. The convergence is unification. How we perceive that experience will be individual, but there is a definitive path framework that is set. Humanity will walk through that door. You can see the karmic backlash across the universe as self-flagellation. I often felt like s some or many of my disciplines could be considered self-flagellation. An example would be my workouts. When I look back, and this is, I'm talking about when I was in my 20s, my early 20s. When I look back, it was like I was punishing myself for something unknowingly. And so I don't know if I went into this, but I used to run when I was in college and when I moved out of my house that's when all my childhood traumas came back to me and I was in college and it was very difficult and so the only way I could really keep my head on straight because I was a very sensitive and emotional person even though I was very shut down and shut in um, and when my emotions went out of whack I really couldn't function and so what I did was I ran, I ran a sprint workout Monday to Friday every morning to the point where my legs could barely hold me up, hold me up. And then at night, Monday to Saturday, I ran five miles, an endurance run. And then Sundays, I still, I just jogged a mile and I would stretch. So every day I did something. And then I worked three jobs, I went to school full time, and it was the only thing, keeping myself busy and occupied was the only thing that kept my head on straight I was, as I was going through and trying to figure out these traumas and what that meant and I was in therapy also and so I literally when I look back even when in my 30s when I would look back at my 20s I'd be like wow I was punishing myself like literally those workouts I was in great shape but I didn't see that all I saw I was literally punishing myself for something like I can't even tell you the intensity of my workouts and I wasn't an athlete I wasn't competing but there was something about that I needed to do that to myself and um, to be able to maintain my, my ability to keep my head straight so I could get through school. And I, now I look back and I see it as self-flagellation, some type of punishment. I was punishing myself for something. Uh, even though I have nothing to be punished for, I felt like I was punishing myself. You can see this karmic black backlash the same way. This is 
the humanity in divinity or the divinity within humanity revealing itself. So these, this cracking of the whip, it's going to be across the universe and no one will be able to escape it. And you can see it as the divine, it's self-flagellation by the divine, punishing itself for bringing this darkness through its consciousness. The same way I or we punish ourselves for the darkness in our minds, the darkness that we've brought to this world, the, the, um, the traumas that we've experienced and how we respond to those traumas by potentially traumatizing others, right? And how we punish ourselves for being bad people, okay? Our idea of bad people and how this cabal energy has used that to manipulate us, okay? They traumatize us. And then they're like, you're a bad person because you don't do this. You don't help others. And then you kind of look at yourself and how when you were so traumatized, you so wish someone would reach out and help you, right? How someone please help me. But you were so traumatized. Me, I was so shut down. There would be no way I would ask someone for help. Because what if I asked them for help and then I got re-traumatized by that, right? Like they were dark. They were filled with darkness. And they were like, oh yeah, sure, I'll help you. And, and then they end up traumatizing me right like all those people who tried to get me in the stripping prostitution um pornography they acted like they wanted to help me but truly they wanted to use me right and i knew that but I, and i didn't allow that but i was very guarded and so when you see people constantly trying to manipulate you you never want to give them somebody an opportunity even if they're sincere you're like i'm not going to give you an opportunity because i've been screwed so many times that chances are you're going to do the same thing and so we've been manipulated that way to not um, uh, allow people in to hurt us again and then those traumas that have been imposed upon us are used as a tool to manip as, as a tool of manipulation look at all these people these homeless people look at these starving people look at these poor uh, people who are so confused about their gender you should give your money to help these people who are homeless you should help you should give your uh, time and energy and compassion to these people who are um, who are confused about their gender. And if you get it wrong and you don't use the proper pronouns, you're a bad person. And so they use our own trauma traumas to make us feel bad and guilty about not giving, not being compa compassionate from their perspective though, not from our perspective, but from their perspective. Right? So we are, so I went a little bit off track, but so we are being manipulated that way, but you can see our, um, the way we judge ourselves and the way we um, condemn ourselves, you can see what this experience, this cracking of the whip, you can compare, draw that parallel to the divine. Okay, so our way, the way humanity punishes itself for not being, for its perception of not being uh, compassionate and kind and giving right? The way we torture and torment ourselves, this self-flagellation, this cracking of the whip, which is going to go out across the universe is the divine's way of kind of punishing itself for bringing this darkness into this universe, right? Because this is a dual universe, light and dark, and the divine source embodies both the light and darkness, the same way we embody both light and darkness in within our cells within our own internal universes right the self Lorene, my universe my light and dark that i work towards balancing right the divine source is the macrocosm of that light and dark okay so this is this backlash this self-flagellation this cracking of the whip is the humanity in divinity or the divinity within humanity revealing itself okay so then i go to what the anunnaki what the anunnaki or watchers did was akin to pedophilia they took advantage of the humans they made their victims feel special in some way like groomers like our modern day like what we call groomers meaning pedophiles who groom children or individuals they started and and groomer and you don't have to groom uh it's not just children 
I've seen adults take advantage of very wounded adults um, who are vulnerable and they knowingly use and manipulate those people and they take advantage of their wounds to do so. And I would say they're also being groomed. They groom them in order to do that. So you don't have to be a minor to be groomed. They, start by, they started the process of turning the cabal into what they've become. So the Anunnaki and the Watchers groomed the humans on this earth. Um, the, who, and those would be the people who we come to know as the cabal. The Anunnaki or Watchers toxic nature and behavior bled into humanity. This toxic behavior fed off of the divinity off the divinity carried within humanity. And so they fed off of our goodness. They fed off of our goodness. The Anunnaki or watchers are were parasites feeding off their hosts, humanity. This dynamic exists to this day. This cabal energy, Zeta Reticuli, Alpha Draco living from separation, feed off the fear, insecurity, anger, resentment, etc., etc., of humanity. So they create the fear and then they feed off of it. Okay? They traumatize us and then they feed off that fear. The parasite is being removed from the host. Only the host will remain on Earth. Only the hosts that have become impervious to the parasite. The parasites must be devoid of a host in order to wither away. Only, excuse me, the parasites of earth are being removed. Only the hosts who have proven themselves impervious to the parasite will remain. This is the covenant decreed. Those proven to be, this is the covenant decreed. Those proven to be impervious to the darkness will inherit Mother Earth. Those who live from humility, unconditional love, faith, and trust in the divine from a place of love and light will transcend and inherit the Earth. Um, and so that was, I'm just going to leave that. I can't really, I feel like I've been talking so long and I really need to get through all this. Um, when the information about the convergence came through and the edges, the end, the whip metaphor, I felt the end. I felt this karmic backlash was not only reaching the edges of the universe, it was ending it. I saw the Taurus turn a cycle. I felt calm, stillness, a little lonely, but complete. I wondered what might happen. I wondered if the universe would fold in on itself like the Tesseract in the movie The Interstellar, but nothing happened. Then information started to come in. Nothing I care to share, just affirmations from the divine to help curb the feeling of loneliness. The relationship we build with the divine, the relationships we build with the divine are unique and very intimate. I did wonder why I was still on this plane of existence, but I knew. Although I have fulfilled my universal obligation and my divine iteration is complete, there are still others who need assistance. I know this is true because I can stand in the middle of that table. I call the universe. I know this because I can stand in the middle of that table I call the universe. See myself in the middle and know there is no table. Every metaphoric photo is me, a reflection of my consciousness. This universe isn't about spiritual laws or anything else. These are mere constructs created by the consciousness. The universe is a projection of my mind. I'm in it, the universe, but I'm also observing or creating it. There is only me, but there are also pieces of me that need to come to the same realization or understanding. 111, 2023. I can feel ambiguity and uncertainty, fog. 
When lacking clarity, these are opportunities, inspirational moments to reach out to the divine, request and receive information and support. There are snakes all around me. I look up and see the grid of spheres and then I have snakes all around me. Snakes can represent wisdom, protection, rebirth, fertility, healing, renewal, and primal energy. In these moments, I feel like the sloughing of the skin and kundalini awakening. Um, in these moments, I feel the sloughing, sloughing of the skin and kundalini awakening. So those are the two, although snakes represent a lot of things, I feel for me, it's the release, the sloughing of the skin, the rebirth, the renewal, and um, snakes rep representing the kundalini awakening. Releasing the old, allowing in the new, awakening all things, all things. And so now every time, I mean, literally, I see the spheres above me and I'm surrounded by snakes all the time, every second. I have uh, the black, and I guess when I say black snakes, they're black snakes and brown snakes. And whenever I think of the black snakes, I think of uh, black mambas. And when I think of um, the brown snakes, I think of brown snakes. Uh, Australia, brown snakes. And, um, and they are all around me and they're not, they're a part of me, they're protecting me, they are awakening me, they are surrounding me. It's just a very powerful uh, uh, energy field. And I always have the spheres above me and the snakes all around me. They're physically around me on the ground or, and then they're also all over my body. Returning to the void, re-entering the universe as we have come to identify it. Like the matrix, there is the cushy world of the matrix and the harsh reality of the real world when they are out of the matrix, right? The void is the cushy existence, but in, in this universe, the void is the cushy existence. Um, the existence we identify as the universe uh, would be the harsh reality. So, um, Although in the movie, The Matrix, when they're in the Matrix, that's where, you know, they have the good food and the nice clothes and the nice reality. And when they're out of the Matrix, their true, their true selves, their physical selves, they are living that harsh life, right? But within this universe, truly, once when we are out of the universe, that is the cushy, unconditional love, compassion, kindness, uh, existence and this universe this physical plane is the harsh reality this came to me when I had the epiphany that this reality all realities this moment all moments are happening simultaneously right now and this universe no longer exists I was a bit perplexed then I saw myself stepping out of and back into this reality the shift in reality Neo did the same thing in the Matrix, but the universe is seamless, seamlessly efficient. So his moving in and out of um, that reality was harsh and, and, and jolting and um, physically, I guess, painful. And that's not how this is. When we shift our consciousness and we go to the void and we come back to this reality, that's not how it works. I asked if my cycles are complete. Why do I continue to return? The answer was to help others. But then later in the day, the information was clarified a bit more. Adjustments were ma are made. There's fine tuning done. A good way to look at it would be looking at back over our lives or experiences. What have I done and why are there changes or adjustments? And what are the changes and adjustments I'd make? then to ponder those ideas, adjustments, or changes. Those thoughts, epiphanies, adjustments, changes are manifested. The divine, the divine seeks to learn and be better through its experiences, just as we do, which makes sense because we are not only part of the divine, we are divine. So I enter, in, um, I enter the void and come back into this reality to create adjustments and changes. So 
as a divine source energy and as I'm thinking, oh my God, what's happened? What would I adjust and what would I change? That's what those shifts are going in and out of reality is just kind of adjusting and changing the reality to create what is most desired. 112, um, 112, you are, you have activated the power grid. Vision, um, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm rushing, but I don't like it when my, my videos are very long and uh, I feel like I've just been talking for a really long time. You have activated the power grid. Vision, when looking at the number 1313, um, so I read this somewhere this is your rebirth, 1313. And when I saw that, the message came in, you have activated the power grid. I saw the pyramids of Giza. I saw light shooting out of the top of the pyramids like the Luxor in Las Vegas. The sacred spaces have been awakened. The message, the implications are profound. Then I see myself wearing, weaving in and out. Even though I'm weaving in and out, the trails being left behind are creating a lemons, uh, lemonscape or infinity symbol. So this is what I see right here. Okay. I see my, myself weaving in and out, but I'm doing one line and then I'm coming back and I'm doing another line. So I'm weaving, I'm weaving, I'm weaving through levels of consciousness, trying to tying them together integrating them so i'm reintegrating the levels of consciousness i am fixing what's been broken okay and i don't want to say i shouldn't say i'm fixing what's been broken i'm mending i'm mending so 114 um um 114 and then um so what came to me yesterday and today was Jesus's resurrection and then revelation, the second coming of Jesus and the resurrection. Um, and being Catholic, we learned, you know, when Jesus returns, all the dead will rise and it'll be a new world. Right. And, um, and that's, you know, you can take that literally, but what came to me is we see all these zombie movies, right? And we are literally living as zombies. We are being led around by the media, by um, entertainment, by movies, by music, by um, everything. Like visually, we are literally being led by our government, by guilt, by fear, by insecurity. Um, you know, um, wear this mask and you will be saved take this injection and you will be saved. Um, take these ensuing injections and you will be saved. Take this pill and you will be saved. So believe man will save you, right? We have been led on that path for the last couple of years that this is the path of salvation. Never ever, I don't, nobody ever talked about faith and trust. They just said we couldn't go to church because it wasn't safe, right? But you don't have to go to church church to um, to worship or express your faith and trust in the divine, right? But that's what has been happening not only in the past couple of years but over many generations, many lifetimes is what do you put your faith in? Okay? And so, uh, again, in um, the Catholic Church or in the Revelation, Jesus, the second coming of Jesus, there's supposed to be a resurrection that happens. But that's not a resurrection of the dead. That is a resurrection of the soul, the spirit, the divine from within, coming out and showing itself. Okay, because really I do feel like we are the walking dead these days. Humanity, when I look around me, I don't see people. I see people projecting ideas and concepts, but I don't believe it's truly what the heart wants. Okay, 
I believe they're doing what they think they should do, what they believe they should do, what they've been told they should do, not what they feel or are inspired to do. And so that um, resurrection isn't a physical resurrection of the dead, it is a spiritual resurrection of the self through transcendence. And so you can look that up. I didn't want to go too much into it. Thessalonians 4, 14, Revelation 14, 13, Daniel 12, 13. And as I was going through all these, reading these Bible quotes, I started seeing um, numbers again and the synchronicities, uh, synchronicities in numbers and the sequences of, of numbers. So I encourage you to look, not only if you go into it and start researching it, not only look at the words, but look at all the synchronicities that are being presented to you as you do your own research. And then when I was, um, and then the message came, we will rise from this walking death, walking death. We will rise from this walking death. And then as I was clearing my energy, uh, in the beginning, or I went to clear my energy and do my usual routine, what I always do, clear center and balance my energy and ask to speak in a way that people can hear and understand and relate to and, um, truly be a paladin in love and light and um, set up protective fields around myself and all energies that are ex executing the will of the divine from a place of balance. When I go through all that, the beginning of this video is like, no, it stopped me right in the beginning. The source energy came in and stopped me. And, and it says to me, um, it says through me. And this is what it kind of says. No, you are the light from which all things come. You are, the, and so I said, I am the light from which all things come. No darkness resides here. It all leaves this world. It falls away. If you have not done the work, you must go. There will be no exceptions. This is transcendence. This is revelation. This is the end. And so as I was clearing my energy in the beginning, the divine source comes in and says, no. You are the light from which all things come. No darkness can reside here. There will be no darkness on this world, only balance. And then the source energy says, all the darkness leaves this world. It falls away. If they have not, or if you have not done the work, you must go. There will be no exception. So that is the message through me that came out. Uh, and this is transcendence. This is revelation. This is the end. And so that's when I knew that the feeling that came through next was um, this, the metaphor I use as in an earthquake, how the, the shaking, the rumbling increases exponentially. Um, right now, this negativity is decreasing exponentially. Um, and I'll say, um, in the past, this came in really quick. I said, Texas is where the healing begins. Texas is where the healing will begin in the United States. Australia is where the healing has begun for the planet. Give me a second. And so I'll just say, there's just so much light coming in through my crown right now, but every time I try to get information, or I request information and ask if there's anything else. It's like, this is it. So throughout my last couple of years, since 2020, I've um, talked about different phases of this transition we were going through and crossing the bridge and the apex and all this stuff. And, um, and I've, and I've known we we're in a process of transition and change, but right now the message coming in is this is it right now. This is it. From here forward, there's going to be um, a massive shift, a massive change. And this is it right now. There's nothing else to be said. This is the change right now. We're not waiting for it. It's not coming. This is it. Okay. This is it. And, uh, and so I'm just going to end because I have a friend that... Um, I met here when I was in, in Seattle who uh, went to, he uh, attended where I work. Um, and we are uh, very close, but we haven't seen each other in a couple years. And he has his own struggles and um, he's one of the best people I ever known. And I always equate him with my father because even though he's made mistakes and he's had a very rough life, like at the depths of his soul, he's 
probably one of the best people I've ever known in my life. And he is, he ranks up there with my dad, which is, I don't say that about, I don't know if I've said that about anybody actually. And so I'll just say that he is, no matter how guilty or sad that he feels he is transcending, he has transcended, but I know the process is going to be very difficult or is difficult that he's going through, but he is not going to be left behind because I won't allow it. There's some people that just can't be left behind. So, um, I think that's it. Thank you.